Welcome everyone to the gravel survey webinar. Uh, this is part of the North Dakota local road needs study. It's a big part of the needs study, an important part, so important that we're doing this webinar. We want to make sure that we collect data from, from all of the counties, townships across the state, accurately represent what you've got going, what it takes to maintain our gravel network, so that the legislative leaders can make sound financial distributions to uh, help us maintain and better our roadway system. So thank you for attending. And just a, a few items to cover. We will be recording. Dustin is in the background. He's recording this. We'll be posting it in the very near future. So if others in your team or other county township members want to figure out or better understand and aren't able to catch one of us to help them out, uh, have them go through the webinar, uh, learn how to how to fill out their gravel survey. Your computer provides your audio. Uh, you will be able to ask questions, co add comments through the Q&A box. Uh, please type those in any time during our presentation. We'll be monitoring that and, and we'll jump in and, and help you so that, that you understand the survey as best you can. So the presentation today. Al Diving is our lead for the gravel survey. He is our Upper Great Plains Transportation Institute lead. Uh, Tim is our generally our like our coach, our overall lead for the needs study. Uh, Sat Paul is helping us with modeling. Uh, my my responsibility is to help the local leaders understand what we've got going to keep everybody in the loop. Make sure we're getting good information to our modeler, Alan, and the team. And then Brad is also helping with some of the some of the modeling, taking that information, figuring out how it can cross over to grit and other things uh, like that. So that's the team today. Uh, we've got everybody here to help you, to answer your questions, and, and walk you through the system. What we want to walk you through today is really understanding gravel roads. You know, just like we have a class out in the field, uh, we want to have this webinar so that, that you that we are all on the same page and turning in good information so that, again, our legislative leaders can understand what our financial maintenance costs are on the gravel roadway. But if we could also think about this as a good opportunity or a chance for us to evaluate our roadway network and maybe, maybe use it like a little health checkup on how we're doing. So, uh, don't think of our study, our survey information as being laborious, but rather uh, an opportunity to evaluate what we're doing, maybe tweak something, uh, do it a little bit better. We're going to give you timelines on when we'd like the information back, but those are, those are points in time where we're going to be compiling data, and really it never ends. We always want that feedback, that interaction from, from you to, to do things better, so uh, please keep the communication channels open. North Dakota, what does our roadway network look like? We've got almost 100,000 miles of local road network to take care of at the county township level. Almost 100,000 and only just under 7,000 miles are paved. That means we've got an awful lot of roadway network that, that we have to get out with motor graders and maintain either graveled or un graveled surfaces. That's what we want to talk about today. How do we understand what we have for unpaved roadway surfaces and accurately reflect what it's going to cost to maintain those? So to do that, Tim, if you could give us a little bit of history of where we've been and where we're going, it'd be wonderful. Uh, thank you, Dale, for that uh, great introduction. And uh, thank everyone for attending and helping us advance uh, this study again. So this is an update uh, of the 2016 study. 2016, we were directed by the legislature, it actually was in 20, um, 2014 period or so, when they directed us to do this study. And we, we did that over 2015 and 16, but we had done, that was about our fourth uh, iteration of uh, uh, county and township local road need studies. And we always tried to improve them all the time. And uh, it, it, as you can see by that bullet, it's a 20-year needs estimate reported by a biennium. 
then the legislature decides how they, you know, what part of that uh, analysis, the 20 year or the biennium one they use. We don't, we don't, we may answer questions on the logic if they asked us, but generally it's their, their decision on how they do that. You know, we, we take, uh, we take this assignment by the legislature very seriously. It's part of why Upper Great Plains Transportation Institute exists. And, uh, you know, we, we hope that uh, this is an ongoing thing. So the legislators uh, still always see the need, see the, see the value of this communication process between us as researchers, uh, studiers, and you folks as the practitioners out there. So we, again, we take it very seriously. You know, looking back, 2016, uh, we collected the, the pavement and, and gravel data in 2015. So it's four-year-old material, and I want to point out that uh, it uh, it's changed a lot. Uh, you folks are using different methods of managing uh, gravel roads, uh, unpaved roads, so to speak, and uh, we're hoping to capture that. You know, in in the needs analysis, those next bullet says there we've got three ca three categories of needs that we present to the legislature: the paved roads, the unpaved roads, and then the bridges. And the unpaved roads there is highlighted. The, you know, that's the gravel survey because, as Dale pointed out, almost 60,000 miles of it. And uh, the paved roads and the bridges, they tend to get the uh, attention uh, because you know, cause people kind of relate those to heavy traffic and to continuity of the system. And uh, bridges make news if they if they go down, but you know, all of you know that bridges are, are, are hard item to maintain. But the unpaved roads uh, gravel survey feeds the the output for the unpaved roads component of the needs category. And uh, I think he'll show you here in a little bit that that makes up a lot of it. But going back into this study, you know, the study results will be used in the future distribution of uh, House Bill 1066, Operation Prairie Dog. And, uh, and again, we understand that it'll they've used the old study and they'll use the new output and they'll average that in. What the timing of that is, um, we're, not, we're not sure yet. It depends on how pots fill, fill and that's not something we're, we have much of an insight into. We're, we're into infrastructure. So Dale, if you can give me the next slide, that'd be good. I'm gonna repeat again what I said. Dale, can, there we go, thank you. As I said, pavements and bridges get the most attention. It's the things that seem tangible to people. Um, unpaved roads, which are, to me, and watching what Dale tries to advance, are one of the more complex items within the network. And they do account for 60% of the last and the prior 20-year uh, investment needs, you know, those as far as other studies. Um, you know, when we talk about paved roads costs, uh, the paved roads components, uh, the items that go into paved roads, you know, the asphalt cement, the aggregate, uh, and then later on the maintenance treatments and practices, they're f fairly consistent across the state or other states. And uh, you know there may be some variations, but not as much variation as there is in gravel and scoria because gravel costs we know vary widely from county to county because you know the gravel you may not have gravel in your in your county and there may be competing uses for the for the aggregates in your count, counties and area and there's variations in quality as well. Likewise, trucking costs are very significant uh, if you have to import gravel from 30, 40, 70 miles away, you know, that has a significant impact. And then we try to uh, try to identify those variables that happen in each county. And that's something that you'll see in, when we do the survey. So again, I want to thank you for participating. And we're going to thank the panel that helped us uh, fine tune the survey here in a bit as well. Uh, I think that's the next slide. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to steal Dale's thunder on that. Again, thank you for, for participating. I look forward to hearing your uh, comments. And uh, again, this is recorded and you know, it helps us to be able to tell the legislature uh, how much effort we put into this survey. So, so thank you in advance. Dale, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Tim. That's a great summary. And, and we do take this seriously. We've made grand improvements with each study. Uh, this one will be no exception. And please, if you see anything in what the outputs that we're providing, why raise your hand because we will make this the best study that we've had to date and, and act to accurately represent your your interests. To uh, to put the survey together, 
we tapped into 11 different counties across the state and uh, asked what they needed, would like us to know about their gravel, their unpaved roadway network. And thank you, thank you for the, the 11 counties and then Association of Counties, Township Officers, and the North Dakota DOT for jumping in. So Marcus, Brian, Nick, Pete, Wayne, Josh, Suhail, Blaine, Tommy, Jesse, Mickey, uh, Corey, Dana, Jenny, Larry, and Brian, a great big thank you. Uh, I think what Ellen's gonna show you in a little bit is a uh, tribute to what, what we had in conversations with everyone on this team. And it's, it's not the end, but it certainly is a, a nice improvement. So with that, I'd like, I'd like to have Alan, if you'd step in and, and help us understand a little bit about the study and then, and then if we can run into the gravel survey, please. Sure. Um, thank everybody for uh, for uh, coming today and uh, logging in and taking a, a time to go through the survey with us. The uh, gravel survey, as Dale had mentioned, uh, and the study in general has improved. Um, we've made we've made improvements to the study at each iteration. The first one, I believe, was in 2010, and that had a gravel survey that went along with that. And based upon each study, we you know we received comments from. Uh, the counties themselves and then we've made improvements to the survey based upon comments directly from counties and or townships but um, these are the main uh, categories that we cover in the survey um, first off in terms of cost cost of aggregate trucking placement uh, dust suppression and stabilization and we'll cover that uh, how that is addressed in the survey in a little more detail uh, a little bit later um, secondly the practices so how frequently do you overlay um, apply a gravel overlay how frequently do you blade and whether you use a base stabilization or dust suppressant and then finally this is a new addition from the previous study um, and this is to look at how um, you in each county treat your roads differently or maintain your roads differently based upon traffic levels so we the, the assumption the underlying assumption is if you have one with high traffic you're going to have a more frequent maintenance schedule than you would on a low traffic road um, next slide Dustin or, uh, um, actually Dustin if you can turn over control to to me on this end and then we'll start going through the, the survey Okay, and hopefully, I think many of you have probably gotten yours in the mail uh, by now. And actually, there is um, th uh, two different versions of the survey. Um, you've got uh, hopefully gotten it via mail as well as by email. Um, the one I'm showing right here, um, right now, and can everyone see that? Yeah, can you see that, Dale? Looks good. Looks good, Al. Okay, um, this is the hard copy that you'll you'll receive in the mail as well. And in addition to that there was another version that was emailed that looks like this and it's in a PDF format and this has um, uh, forms where you could actually fill in directly so if you want to just type in um, you can type directly into the form save it and then just email it back to us if that's more convenient to you um, whichever method you prefer um, will work just fine for us um, so the you know just identifying information and contact information if we have any questions uh, once we receive the survey or would like some clarification um, let us know who we should contact um, to do that and in certain cases we have somebody other than the highway um, superintendent um, prepare the survey sometimes we've had um, um, engineering firms that have done it as well um, so whoever that is let us know who to contact if we have any questions uh, so first off we're going to talk about the the aggregate itself and we have a number of different options here and this is based upon um, we've made improvements in the last two surveys and also this survey as a result of uh, comments from the the steering committee um, but we have a number of options um, whether your county uses gravel or scoria and then a bunch of other additional options um, uh, going along with with uh, the processing of the gravel and so forth and the example that's given um, given up here if your county uses crushed specification base gravel then you select in this case uh, gravel crushed material and specifications and on the hard copy you just you know fill in the boxes so whichever those apply to you to you or in your county um, just uh, let us know check one or more if uh, as they apply um, the second section talks about once we have the aggregate how are we how are we putting it down on the road we have three options here uh, truck uh, truck drop and blade uh, windrow and equalize and water rolling and compaction and if there's something else that doesn't fit in those three boxes 
um, we have the, the category for other as well. Um, so pick whichever one is, applies to your county and just for example, we can use the, the windrow and equalize in this case. So that's the aggregate and then how we get the aggregate on the road. Um, this section looks at um, who's performing uh, the work at, by, by individual task. And this came about because we had two neighboring counties. One county had um, costs that were significantly lower than the neighboring county. And that we were trying to look for a reason why, why that would vary so much. Um, the both counties had fairly, um, uh, fairly available gravel in both counties, which is comparable. But one county owned the pit, um, owned the equipment to, to do the crushing, did all the hauling themselves. And as a result, they had a cheaper cost because they internalized all the, the cost of the equipment and so forth. So uh, we're looking for here by task, um, how much is performed by the county and how much by the contractor for each of these individual ones. And just for example, we would say blading, we have 100% is, uh, is done by the county and nothing by the contractor. But on the other case, we may have on hauling, we may have 50% done with county trucks and 50% by, by a contractor. So for each of these, uh, provide your estimates um, as they may apply to your county. Um, the big section here uh, looks at the costs. And as Dale had mentioned and Tim had mentioned, there are significant variations um, from county to county in terms of in terms of costs. And this is the section where we, we look to, to quantify that and mainly to understand what the cost conditions are in your county. Um, the first one, the most straightforward, is the average gravel or scoria cost. And this is the cost at the pit, pit including crushing and royalties. Um, we have two options, and depending upon how you price it, it could be uh, per yard or per ton. So for example, um, we'll use $6 per cubic yard in this case. And that just uh, lets us know what the unit is and we can convert it to, uh, convert everybody's uh, so we have it in the same, uh, in the same units. And I believe it was Tim that had mentioned, depending upon the location and availability of gravel, there may be quite a haul uh, to get it to, to the roads. So then we're looking at the trucking costs from the gravel origin. And we have a few options here. Um, we have per loaded mile, per cubic yard, and per ton. So in terms of sometimes the, the bids may include the, the cost, uh, you know, including the crushing royalties as well as the transportation per yard. Um, but just for example, say we have uh, uh, $4 per loaded mile as an example. And then to help us understand what the, the cost is, uh, we're looking for in the next uh, item here, the average trucking distance for the aggregate. And we can enter this, um, let's say it's 15 miles. And this is 15 miles one way, or if you have the information round trip, um, either or. So the, the goal of the, the buttons on the side here is to make it um, is most, most straightforward to whatever units your county works with. Um, we have noticed variations from county to county, so we just want to make uh, filling out the survey as easy as possible. Uh, the next is the truck pay payload. How many yards or how many tons can you haul? Um, I believe the most common by far con truck configuration is either the five or six axle semi um, for, uh, for hauling gravel. But in certain cases, we have pups as well. So this helps us understand uh, well, the truck configuration, but we can use um, a typical uh, truck around 25 tons. Um, the placement costs, we have this in a per mile uh, basis. And I'll, I'll jump back up a little bit here. Um, because we have these three um, pla uh, placement practices or whatever else your county may add. And there's gonna be um, di significant differences in the cost for each of these, depending upon which one um, the county um, utilizes. So just enter whatever this, um, this estimate would be for uh, per mile cost for placement of gravel when you apply an overlay. Um, next onto the blading cost. We've specified here an annual cost or average annual cost per mile. Um, if you have a, a, a cost per time blading or per hour, let us know that in the survey if that's more convenient to answer. We've had a few counties that answer on a per hour basis. But if you have the annual cost per mile, that's what we're going to convert your other numbers back to. So, um, so whichever one works best for you, uh, please enter it in that way. Um, if your county uses dust suppressant or base stabilization, um, cost estimates are requested there on a per mile basis as well. Um, the next section, um, as Tim or Dale, I don't remember which, had mentioned is 
This section looks to see how you um, maintain roads differently based upon the traffic levels. And we have an example here in gray, which we have a low, medium, and high. And the, the reason for this section of the survey is one county's high volume road may be another county's low volume road. There's differing traffic conditions based upon tra traffic generators. Um, you know, in oil country, you may have very high traffic on, on gravel roads and compared to other counties where it would be, would be less. So in this example, we have um, the example of low being less than 50, um, medium 50 to 150, and high 150 to 350. And oh, Al, Al, can I jump in there? So that line there, that's totally fictitious. We really don't expect anybody to have that as their their target or likely it wouldn't be right i mean we just made that up yeah correct this is just an example um so to to yeah to provide an example so as it mentioned here um up above here and i'll highlight this here this is expected to vary significantly from county to county on the traffic levels so please use your own estimate of the traffic levels and actually i'll bring it down to the section below here's the section where we're asking you to fill out. Um, so whatever you um, estimate to be a low traffic road or low volume road, medium volume road, and a high volume uh, gravel road in your county, um, provi please provide an estimate of what the traffic level um, um, would be. So Al, just so everybody knows, and to make, sh uh, make sure I'm correct with this, uh, we're asking you to just estimate because Brad and the North Dakota DOT have many traffic counts from around the state. And then as Brad and Ellen put this information into the model, we know what many of the county roads are. So when you give us information, uh, we're gonna be able to, to assign those to different roadways. So don't worry that you're nailing it exactly. We, we aren't using this for ADT information. We're using it to populate those, those roadway segments with their costings. Is that roughly correct? Yeah, that is exactly correct, Dale. Yeah, the, the reason for the different traffic levels is more so how you maintain the roads differently based upon traffic, rather than um, telling us what the traffic levels are. Um, and I can't remember the number exactly, but there's um, uh, over a thousand counts that we're using in the, uh, from the last couple of years um, statewide on, on, on local roads that we'll be using. So there's a lot of data out there. Um, we're just looking for information to understand how each county is, is um, maintaining the roads differently based upon traffic levels. So Al, we do have a question from Sharon. Uh, where do we get the traffic count numbers that we've submitted? Uh, where can a county find out what you and Brad have uh, that you're working on? Brad, do you wanna jump in on that? Um, I can speak just for the, the accounts we get from the North Dakota DOT. Uh, we requested from those from them, and I believe all of those are on the website, but correct me if I'm wrong on that, Brad. Right, the North Dakota DOT has their whole traffic count file out there on their website. Uh, you can view it on a map. Um, and then as we get through completing the model and all the data's in, the model gets complete. Um, we'll also have traffic on each segment of road and we'll provide that also in a web map so it's out there kind of what, what in the end what we came up with so you can take a look at that. And from the previous study on the UGPTI website in mostly the upper right hand corner there is the study of county and local roads and the, the map viewer from the previous study is, is still available there so we'll be having an updated version of that uh, to show um, the estimates from the travel demand model for the, the AADT by individual segment of road. And then for 2019, the traffic counts that were taken, the North Dakota DOT did the central part of the state with state and then those selected county spots that they checked. And then Brad with the his crew out of Upper Great Plains did the Eastern third with UGPTI students and then Brad hired consultants to do the Western third. So that's on the local network to pull some spots and, and get an overall uh, snapshot of where we're at with ADT. Correct, yeah, so there's some of those might have had a, a two or three year lag. So the, the goal of the data collection plan for, for traffic this year was to get everything current. So maybe I should uh, stop and ask you a couple more questions. Dana's got a question on different types of gravel. They've got some gravel with PI 
uh, some without PI, and other counties have uh, screened and some have crushed. Uh, so they have multiple uh, bid specs in their county. Should they submit both, uh, average them out? What would we like to see? Yeah, both if possible, and um, and also kind of an estimate of the percentage that would fit each category would be helpful. And actually, um, I'll jump ahead here. Well, actually, towards the end of the survey, we also do request um, um, different uh, gravel specifications based upon um, federal aid versus non-federal aid roads. But if there are different categories aside from that, um, any additional information would be very helpful. So yes, Dana, if that's available, we'd definitely appreciate that. And then uh, one more question. Uh, Trail County, gravel thickness is what we do now, uh, what we hope to get to. So uh, gravel thickness, what you'll probably want is maybe a, a roadway width too, so you can get tons per mile. Is that fair, Al? Yep. Well, yeah, any, any, whichever is the easiest, um, you know, many times we do have, uh, you know, in terms of inches, and then if we have a width associated with that, many times we've called out to the counties to, to get an average width as well. But yeah, any unit that is, that is, um, is easiest for you, but the, the main thing we're looking for, um, we'll convert it all to tons per mile at the end. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and then this example, again, we had 50, uh, 50 to 150 and 150 to 350 for our three traffic ranges. And just as an example here, we had on the low, we do an overlay of three inches, four on the medium and five on the high. And then the low we blade basically once a month, medium a little more frequently than once a month and high twice a month in, just, in this hypothetical example. And then um, also in the low, we're putting a, a thinner gravel overlay on but we're doing it less frequently. So we're looking at the interval between um, gravel overlays. So we're putting three inches on every seven years in this example on the low. And on the high, we're putting um, five inches on every three years. And then also, if your county does utilize dust suppression and base stabilization, um, the portion of this is to determine which levels of traffic you would actually apply those to. Um, so if, if your county doesn't utilize either of those, um, then it would be no all across the board. Um, but if it uses it on the high or the medium, medium and high, um, just just um, it's a yes or no answer in those cases. And at, also at the any time, uh, if there's questions, um, the top of each survey has a email address, which is county twp at ugpti.org, and that is basically the general um, uh, question for surveys. If you want to answer, ask a question by email, and that will go to myself. Dale and Tim, so we'll be able to respond as quickly as possible. And in addition, my uh, telephone number, my office number is up, up on the top of the survey as well. So as you go through, if there's any additional questions, uh, feel free to reach out to, to any of us. Um, and then there are variations of, um, in the cost for the type of dust suppressant. So if you answered yes for dust suppressant for any of the categories, which type does your county use? And then I'll also, uh, Another area for greater variation um, for type is the type of base stabilization, which type do you use? And then we can um, use that along with the, the base stabilization cost from the, the cost component um, to determine unit costs. Um, this is new for this year, um, looking at the gravel road condition. Uh, before we asked you to rate your overall system uh, in these four, very good, good, fair, and poor. And, and this year we um, asked this differently by splitting it up into um, federal aid roads or county major collectors and non-federal aid, non-county major collectors. So if in your county, if um, you know, due to um, a funding availability, um, your, the federal aid roads may be in better condition. So if we wanna look at, we have, for example, 50% um, in good condition, 30% in, uh, in fair, and then um, 10 each in, in, in fair and poor. And the same thing, if you can um, provide a rough estimate for the federal aid roads and the non-federal aid roads, um, and that would help us get a better idea of how you, the current maintenance practices are um, um, allowing you to maintain the roads. And then this, this section was, I was gonna jump ahead to, but it relates to Dana's comment there as well. Um, and this is a request to attach a sample specification and sample gradation 
or the state materials specification number um, for the gravel used in your county. And we just use the, um, the qualifier if it's different on CMC routes versus non-CMC -CM route, routes, uh, if you use a different, different class of gravel um, for those. Um, if you could split it up, but if as if there's additional categories aside from these two, and it could be by traffic level in certain cases, um, any any um, type of gravel that you use and you have inf information available, we'd uh, definitely um, appreciate any input from that. And then finally, and often the most important section of the survey is the comments or suggestions. Um, in here, uh, of course, we you know we have a lot of items on the survey, but. There is very likely a chance that we've um, that we haven't asked something that applies to your county. So, if there's something that we have missed or something that you'd like to add that is specific to your county, this is the the place to do it. Um, in addition, um, if there is any uh, challenges that your county has, and I think almost every county in the state could answer water um, this year as one of the the additional challenges above uh, regular maintenance. But if you have new traffic generators, if you're out in, in the oil patch or there's a new shuttle elevator that went up in your county and it's funneling a lot of traffic, um, um, any comments or suggestions you have in addition to the survey inputs, um, we'd appreciate any that you have. So that is the quick overview of the, the county study. Um, so are there any else? questions? So just a statement on why we're collecting some of the gradation material. Uh, many reasons we want to we would very much like a report card on how things are going and then the North Dakota DOT and the counties have afforded NDL tap a part-time person the state tech rep essentially to come out and help and one of the things we'd like to do along with the study is to look at how we're doing and and maybe help you so there are prediction models uh, when you punch in your gravel gradation uh, we can predict how it's going to perform and we'd like to show those or that information to you. And it's a lot more meaningful if it's actually your information rather than just general. So we hope to grab some of that and then and then come back to you on an individual basis with our, our tech or our engineer and uh, help walk you through how you may be able to use products to, to better stabilize and keep that roadway surface tighter with less dust, safer roads, and save lives. Are there any questions or comments? Again, the Q&A section is open. Al, you did a very nice job going through this. I love how you put together the fillable PDF. And uh, as, long, uh, as long as I have the survey up here, here's my, my telephone number as well as that, um, that email address. Um, any questions at any time, just uh, give me a call or, or send an email to that, uh, that uh, email address and we'll get back to you as soon as, as, as we can. Al, this is a little more than we had had planned but before you jump into the township survey could you do just a a, a 10,000 foot overview of how you and Brad take the data run it through the model what is a model I don't even know what the model is that you do and and describe what the output might be and how how we use that in the study okay that's a good question Dale um, in the overview, we um, operate a travel demand model, which looks at all of the potential. Uh, we're, the focus is on freight uh, primarily, but um, the initial, I guess, going back way in history, the initial driver for, for these studies was um, the, the development out in the oil patch, but also um, due to um, further consolidation of grain shipments to, um, to fewer grain elevators with, with the shuttle program over the last, uh, um, actually, 20, 25 years now. Um, as a result, there's been additional um, stress put on a number of county routes. Um, so as part of this, we develop a travel demand model, which actually um, can, I'll switch, um, well, I just can't do that right now, but um, which looks to model the origins and destinations for um, grain movements, um, manufacturing movements, and oil-related movements, including the movement of crude, um, uh, saltwater disposal and all the inputs that go into, into the drilling. And so we connect the um, origins and destinations and then sum these all up to get estimates of traffic on individual segments of roads. And the section of the survey that asks um, how the counties maintain um, the roads differently based upon traffic levels will be used directly or, or almost directly on those um, traffic forecasts that we have on each mile of road. 
Um, but the travel demand model is then compared before that we get to that point is compared against the actual counts that were taken um, to to calibrate the model to make sure that we're representing as best as we can um, from a statewide basis the traffic that is on in uh, each individual segment of road and then from that uh, the traffic level and the costs and maintenance practices that are, are taken from the survey results that are applied at the county level and um, as I think uh, it was alluded to earlier the the results from the survey or the responses from the survey played uh, are used directly in in the needs calculations on a county by county basis because there are significant variations so we use the, the actual county numbers um, when available so this is a little bit outside the gravel survey but again before you go to the township uh, dana's got a question how how do we factor in the cost to repair or replace a culvert. Tim, maybe you want to jump in? Ah, uh, Dale, this is Brad. I guess it's yeah. Tim's not there. I guess for the, particularly for the paved roads, the, you know, the culverts kind of get factored in when we determine a cost. If we have to reconstruct a road, um, the costs of the culverts are generally in there because we're using a and then an average per mile cost to reconstruct a road or to widen it and then um, those those culverts are included in there we don't have any costs that are added on on an individual culvert um, like in through the for a gravel road so that they're not those aren't actually factored in for any county so um, perfect yep Dana I hope that helps so if we're we're widening, we're improving a roadway, then we have the per mile cost. Those are averaged in, but not specifically looked at. Uh, so the under 20 averaged in. Okay, Al, back to you. Okay, and then there's a parallel survey. I'll close out the county survey. Um, here is the township road survey. And this is um, all a hard copy that's mailed out to um, I believe it's all to county, uh, excuse me, township uh, uh, superintendents uh, across the state. So a little over 1,200 surveys went out um, last Thursday. And it's very similar, as you, as you might notice, um, to, the, to the county survey. But since um, counties have full-time staff that work on roads um, and townships do not, we've, we've simplified the survey a little bit because of the, the data limitations and, um, and also the amount of uh, amount of time that um, the the county um, officers would have to respond to this. Um, we have a very similar to the, the gravel cost section of the county study um, here in the township. We have uh, two different options for the um, townships to respond. The previous study um, was this table one, which where it had the cost breakouts. So this is very similar. So we have the cost per yard or per ton, crushing royalties, trucking cost, placement cost, blading cost, and dust suppressant cost. But one valuable piece of input that came from the steering committee is that some counties may just get a per yard cost or per ton cost and may not have the information to break it out further. So depending upon what information the county has, they can either answer the first, or excuse me, the township, sorry. Um, uh, they can answer the first table if the data is available, and if not, um, we have the second table here, which would be the total cost either per yard, per ton, or an annual cost uh, per mile within their township and which and again the the goal of both of the surveys is to make it as easy as possible to uh, um, uh, for for the respondent to respond to this uh, to answer the survey um, and again we have the average um, gravel scoria overlay thickness and we have it uh, the three options as well yards per mile inches or tons per mile um, and uh, so whichever the units that the townships uh, deal in um, we have an option for that and of course, um, I was uh, emailing back and forth with Dale after we um, went through the survey this morning. And of course, it's, we printed out uh, 1,250 or whatever the number is out and sent them out and noticed an error in the survey right away. But that's, that's, <laughs> that happens from time to time. Um, but the qu first question here on the maintenance practice is who actually does the maintenance for the township? And the, the top two are uh, tep uh, typically what it would be. The county does the maintenance and essentially the township uh, may turn over their, their revenue over to the, the county um, to maintain the roads. Um, other cases, the township may contract um, 
with uh, with firms to to uh, provide the maintenance, uh, and, and in certain cases, the township has their own equipment, and the township staff uh, does the maintenance themselves. And very similar to the um, the the county survey, except for having three traffic categories, we're looking for the average blading frequency once a week, once a month, or two per month, or whatever it might be. The frequency, uh, you know, depending upon part of the state, it may be um, once uh, once a year, twice a year. And then finally, graveling frequency every year, every two to three years, every three to four years, or five or more years, uh, whatever it would be. Um, so we have options there. Um, and then finally, this very similar question that I posed um, when I was going through the county study. Aside from uh, routine maintenance improvements, what other challenges are facing the roadway maintenance um, for the townships? And, and of course, the flooding would be one that I would expect we'd hear um, across the state. Um, and uh, any other high traffic generators that have, have come about. And then finally, um, as with the county survey, a section for comments or suggestions. And also both for the townships and the counties, if you can't fit the comments in the box if you're using the fillable PDF or it won't fit in the space that's given on the survey, please attach as, as many additional pages as, as you need to, um, to provide your comments. So that's a quick overview of both the um, county and the township studies, or excuse me, surveys. So, so any additional questions, Dale? Yeah, Al, uh, Dennis has a question. The township surveys, do they get sent to the townships also? Can you describe that process? Yeah, the township surveys are sent directly to the township officers. Uh, we went through the uh, North Dakota Township Officers Association and got their mailing list, and from that sent that to the township supervisor. Perfect. And then FYI, Larry is on the line uh, right now on the webinar. So he's he's uh, taking information and, and Al has submitted uh, text, a little write-up for the grassroots for the township newsletter. And Larry is going to put that in as another reminder to the township officers to turn, to fill it in their survey and to turn that into Al. And last year, out of the 1,360 organized townships in the state, or last survey, I should say, last need study. About how many did you get from the township cell? It was about 65% of the surveys we got back. Wow. So that is, a, for a, a survey, is a very good turnout um, yeah. on, on a cold survey like that. And as long as we got Larry in the line, uh, an additional thanks uh, uh, to, to Larry and, and um, his organization for helping us with the, the addresses. Um, yeah. Yeah, very nice job, Larry. It speaks yeah, much appreciated. Um, speaks very highly of our township officers and their commitments to man, a lot of volunteer hours to keep our roadway network up and appreciate the studies and the survey help. And then Dennis has a quick note. Wow, with all the flooding and the combining and all that late work and uh, we might have have difficulty getting some of this stuff back and and getting information maybe it you know something we need to nudge along. We're, we're ready to help. I mean, if people needed to call in and, and have us fill out the, the township survey, you can see Al's got put together that should only take a, a few, minutes, few minutes from a township officer. Uh, we, do have, we do have that survey to all of you at the county level. And we do that because you're like the, the big brother, big sister for the townships. And, and they may call in and, and ask you for help along with calling in to Al and our team. So um, thank you for helping them. A little different uh, away from what we are, we're talking about now, we have a question from Dennis. Is there a survey going out for the grading paving uh, reconstruction? And, and that maybe expands a little bit about what uh, Dana asked with the culverts and the, and the reconstruction of minor structures. Any plans there, Al? Uh, Dale, yeah, this is Brad, <clears throat> and I guess I could jump in there. I'm going to be talking here shortly about uh, the good old program everybody's aware of and knows it's grit, and that geographic roadway inventory tool is really kind of the, you know, the big uh, purpose for that is to gather some of that information for paving, for paved roads in particular, but also gravel roads. and. And that's where we get our paving and uh, grading reconstruction information from is from GRIT. So um, it's important that that also gets filled out. Um, but there, there isn't a survey for that 
Um, and the only thing we would, if we did have to do, we might have to do something there for townships if, if we really needed that because um, not all townships have access to grid. Um, although counties do enter in the paved road information for uh, townships or are or, or, uh, requested to do that. So, um, so we'll get some of that paved reconstruction information on township roads from grid also. And then, Brad, you also get the information from Brian and the local government crew on, on county projects that are bid through the DOT too, right? So we know per mile costs and, and such. Right, we do get that info, well, and we relied mostly on that uh, last, the last uh, study, which was four years ago. But now we probably won't rely on that too much. We might use it for some verification, but um, for the most part, we have all of our information on paid roads for sure are all in uh, grit. So we're going to be relying on that more than, than that other data. Um, uh, this is Tim. I'll add uh, something else. We do make some assumptions that we uh, state in the uh, final report as far as um, what's a logical level of maintenance over a 20 year period. Like if it's high traffic, like how often a seal coat is applied and crack sealing and that type of thing. So we do make some assumptions in addition to just the reconstruction costs. So uh, we've been doing that for at least two iterations. And we do that same thing with bridges as well. We'll assume that there's bridge preventive maintenance, even if there isn't going on in each county, we still show those things as a, a need. You know, even if there wasn't enough money to do the preventive maintenance for a bridge, preventive maintenance for a, pay, for a pavement, um, we'll make assumptions based on two to three different traffic levels. Um, uh, anything you want to add to that on that, Brad? I know you worked with I and Andrew on that in the past. Yep, for those maintenance costs, that's really all we have are able to do right now. Um, again, there's an area in GRIT to enter in maintenance information, and we'll start looking at that and pulling some of that to get some idea of maintenance where it is entered um, and use that in some of those estimations for you know, the system-wide maintenance of those roads. And during the last study, we also looked at east and west and, and costing across the state and did have a differential out west. I, you know, we'll look at the information, but Tim, would it be fair to say we're probably not going to run with an east and west differential for this study? It's, it's, uh, it's, that's a good assumption. Unless we found something as we d dug into uh, the grit analysis um, and, not, yeah, and also getting uh, recent projects from local government. Uh, we didn't do it in the last session uh, about four years ago and um, we, we don't anticipate it. If we see something, well, then we'll, we'll consider it. Thank you. So the county needs study last out of the last survey that was done, Al, we have 53 counties. How many responses did we get? And how many would you like to get this survey? Uh, we, I believe we had 53 last time, and that's we're hoping to get again this year. OK, we'll be working hard. We'll get you the 53. We've got uh, good county leadership. And on the township, 65%. Boy, Larry, you've got uh, the bar set pretty high, but we're going to be helping you to get that uh, even higher. We want to represent the townships. They are the lifeline of our business economy in the state. We want to represent them very well. So nice job. Al, any, anything else, or are we good to go? Well, other than to say we appreciate all the, the input and the work that the counties are doing in providing this information. Um, and it's a very valuable, or it's invaluable to the study um, moving forward. So thank you in advance. Perfect. Nice job, Al. Thank you. So a little bit about, about our timeline. Uh, we had an official conference call with our steering committee on October 1st, even though we collected a wealth of information prior to that uh, to get us started. And the surveys, as Al mentioned, were emailed to you. And then hard copies were mailed out to the counties and to every township across the state. We are now doing our webinar. And then the next big date is the November 20th. And Dennis, you have a good point uh, with the weather uh, the flooding, uh, all those conditions,
that uh, 20th might be tough, but we'll be monitoring this. Al will keep us all apprised of where we're at, and we'll keep you apprised. If we need we need a little extra effort, a little extra time, we're going to be working with you, making sure this meets your needs. And, and Larry, uh, same thing, however we can help the townships. Now, big, big thing, 60% of the cost for our gravel, gravel, our roadway network is gravel roads. And a reminder that the reason that they're gravel, we'd love them all to be paved. We just, we just simply can't afford it. So maybe Brad, you could walk us through why we can't afford to have all paved roads. All right, thanks, Dale. I just wanted to touch on a couple of tools that are available, and I'll talk about them a little bit and maybe try to answer Dale's questions, but we'll see if I get into that too far. Um, but we have developed over the years a couple of tools, and I know I've presented, and most of you have all seen them at one point or another at a conference or uh, through a webinar, so I'm not going to go into details on them, but those two tools are the local road surface selection tool, and then, of course, there's GRIT, uh, Geographic Roadway Inventory Tool. But um, both of those tools were uh, developed and, and included areas to enter in the same kind of information that we're talking about in this survey, uh, the blading, the regraveling, the costs. Um, and we're going to be doing this survey, you know, looks like every two years now for a long time. So. Um, there's some benefit here to not have to refill that to, that uh, survey out every year, but to actually have it entered into a system. Um, the other thing with having it in the system, um, there's tools built within it that let you get some, let the counties get some use out of it, and um, let you see what those costs are over a 20-year period. So that, uh, just like Dale said, you can start to analyze. You know, what is it better to just have a gravel road, or is it better to with dust control on it, uh, do stabilized gravel. Uh, maybe we should be doing auto seal, um, or maybe it should be um, a hot mix asphalt, uh, thin lift hot mix asphalt on that road. Um, so that's the first tool we have here is the local local road surface selection tool that allows you to put that information in that those maintenance costs and that initial cost um, on the screen. You can see that we're on the gravel tab. So again, you can see all those items that that we're just we're talking about going into this survey. So, um, so as you're looking at this now at the end of the year and filling out that survey, maybe it's a good time to also look at um, to pull up this tool and enter your information in uh, here at the same time. And um, the data is based on different um, ADT levels. So you'd be entering in data, because that's what changes the cost, really, is how, how, how much ADT is on the road. So there's um, five different levels, like 0 to 100, 100 to 200. And you just enter in your information on, the, on those roads. And, um, and we're going to be doing this survey, you know, looks like every two years now for a long time. So. Um, there's some benefit here to not have to refill that to, that uh, survey out every year, but to actually have it entered into a system. Um, the other thing with having it in the system, um, there's tools built within it that let you get some, let the counties get some use out of it, and um, let you see what those costs are over a 20-year period. So that, uh, just like Dale said, you can start to analyze. You know, what is it better to just have a gravel road, or is it better to with dust control on it, uh, do stabilized gravel. Uh, maybe we should be doing auto seal, um, or maybe it should be um, uh, hot mix asphalt, uh, thin lift hot mix asphalt on that road. Um, so that's the first tool we have here is the local local road surface selection tool that allows you to put that information in that those maintenance costs and that initial cost um, on the screen. You can see that we're on the gravel tab. So again, you can see all those items that that we're just we're talking about going into this survey. So, um, so as you're looking at this now at the end of the year and filling out that survey, maybe it's a good time to also look at um, to pull up this tool and enter your information in uh, here at the same time. And um, the data is based on different um, 
ADT levels. So you'd be entering in data because that's what changes the cost really is how, how, how much ADT is on the road. So there's um, five different levels, like zero to 100, 100 to 200. And you just enter in your information on, the, on those roads and um, um, the years between applications, the number of times per year and the unit cost. And in the end, uh, if we advance to the next slide, oops, I'm going the wrong way. So in the end, when you have the information in there, not only is it there and stored for you, so you can use it from year to year, but then you can also print out a report uh, for, for these roads in these different um, ADT ranges that tell you over that 20 year period, what's the cumulative cost uh, for those different types of roads. So um, there you see the HMA, AST gravel, dust control, stabilized gravel, and at this, ADT level, you can see stabilized gravel it comes out a little bit less than the dust control. Um, but so that might be something you want to consider on this on this type of road uh, as you're looking at maintaining those into the future. So that's one tool where you're, you're entering in the information that we're talking about on the survey and you actually get some use out of doing that, that data entry. Um, the next one um, is looking at grit. And GRIT's kind of a different level of it where you can enter in that information on each individual gravel road segment that you have out there. Um, you've done this data for almost all the counties have done the data for the paved roads and that's again what we're using in the need study. But there's also the option you can put it in your gravel roads uh, in addition to the paved roads. And uh, some counties have done that. Not a lot have put their gravel roads in, but some have. And you fill out that same, you know, when it was, when it was uh, uh, graveled and other types of information. And you see from this table that we show on top here, um, there's the four layers of information that we have in GRIT. Um, construction history, construction planning, bridges. Um, those are minor structure bridges, uh, those less than 20 feet. And then your load restrictions. And then the last one is maintenance. So for your maintenance roads, you can see down here if it's a gravel road, you can put in, you know, how many times you're blading that per year, how many times you're re-graveling it, the cost of doing that, basically all the same stuff that you're putting in on the survey. But you have a chance to enter it here on each individual road. And then you have a record of what you're doing there um, over the years. You have what the costs are. And I guess long term, we would like to be able then to, to uh, maybe we wouldn't even have to have a survey where we'd have this information available right here within GRIT. Um, we'd be able to use it for the need studies. You'd, uh, the counties would be able to use it for their own studies and planning and how they want to maintain their roads into the future to, to kind of be um, pro providing a surface and, and whether it's paved or uh, dust control or gravel, but whatever is the most economical way to maintain that road in a good condition, um, the information here allows you to do that. So um, I guess you, you're you at the end of the year here and, and I guess with the flooding and everything else going on, there really isn't a lot of time, but um, hopefully sometime uh, before we get into the snow season, counties will have some time to go in and, and enter some of the gravel road information. and. It doesn't have to be every gravel road in the county, but it could be a kind of a set, maybe the county major collectors or maybe um, those with higher volumes um, where you'd get this information in uh, and be able to use it yourselves then. Um, so uh, I guess that's, that's the two tools that are available. They, uh, if you go to the UGPTI website, you can uh, find it there either under LTAP or under our, our resources tabs that we'll, we have links to these tools. You can look at some of the previous webinars if you want and then or uh, um, just uh, get, get in and, and begin to use them um, for this data entry. That's all I had, Dale, um, on, the, on those tools. Nice review. Thank you, Brad. So good, good information. They're available on the web. And another thing that's available on our, our web and resource page is uh, video that Denise with our team along with a couple from the Burley County and Brian with North Dakota DOT uh, worked and put together and I 
like to show this to you. This is on our resource page, and, and I know that the times are really, really tough. The weather's been so challenging. A gravel road is going to offer challenges. It's not a paved road. So when it's wet, when we've got the flooding, you're going to have you're going to have some desire to have a higher level road, which we, well, you look at the numbers. We just can't afford under 7,000 miles of paved road and out of the 100,000 miles of local roadway network. Thirty-five percent of the nation's four million miles of roads are not paved. In states like North Dakota, there are more unpaved roads than there are paved. I am driving 75 miles on an unpaved road for my commute to work every day. I want to make sure that people are aware of the unsafe conditions on the unpaved roads. Denise Brown is the training coordinator for the North Dakota Local Technical Assistance Program. She trains county transportation engineers on a host of topics, including how to maintain and help ensure the state's 60,000 miles of unpaved roads are as safe as possible. Nationwide, nearly 600 people died on unpaved roads in 2017. Roadway features are a contributing factor to crashes on unpaved roads. Poor hills and curves, limited sight distance, and a lack of signs and delineation are also factors. Another problem is speeding. More than 41% of fatal crashes on unpaved roads in 2017 were related to speeding. They come up on large agricultural equipment, slow moving, uh, taking up a lot of the roadway, and it's very difficult, one, to judge how fast they're coming up on that vehicle in a lot of cases, and two, then when they react to it, either slow down enough or safely pass it. 84% of the fatal crashes on unpaved roads in 2017 were single vehicle crashes. Drivers run off the road and either roll over or strike a fixed object, such as a tree or utility pole. There are several strategies to improve safety on unpaved roads. Remove obstacles from the clear zone, improve sight distances, install and or enhance signage, and maintain the road's surface. If you're coming around a curve, and there's vegetation, heavy tree growth on the inside of that curve, uh, the driver isn't necessarily able to see around the corner. Install advanced warning signs and highly visible chevrons at curves. Add retro-reflective panels to the posts of signs to increase reflectivity. And make sure signs aren't missing, damaged, or dirty. This is pretty regular to find missing signs like this. Over 80% of our roads are rock. In a farm community, we get a lot of signs down from big equipment. It's also important to properly maintain the road's surface. The main focus right now is getting a good spec with the right clay content in it so that the roads don't washboard and the gravel is not loose. The loose gravel tends to be an issue with keeping cars on the road. A 4% crown is, uh, is important because of drainage. Anything more than that, uh, uh, like hard rains, uh, wash the vines and the binders off the road too quickly. Loose gravel may cause drivers to lose control of their vehicles. To address this issue, South Dakota and North Dakota recently developed a Plasticity Index, or PI, which outlines how much clay and other materials should be in the gravel. The PI is now part of their specs. They've also identified a way to reduce excessive dust, which can obscure a driver's view of the road and oncoming traffic. In South Dakota, we use both magnesium and calcium chloride as a dust suppressant. Uh, three major keys to that. One is material, one is application, which is, is set by the, by the distributor, and three is the preparation of the roadway. You must loosen two to three inches of that roadway, pre-wet it before, before adding the chloride. This will usually give you a very tight, hard surface, very safe for the public, and uh, should last you a year if done properly. A significant portion of unpaved roads are rural. Road owners should understand the challenges as well as the low-cost treatments available to improve safety.
So what did you think of that? The, starts off with Denise. She did a stellar job there. 75 miles round trip to get to work to make sure that, that what she does every day matters. And that's the way our whole team is looking at, at what we're doing here with the needs study. Uh, what matters is you. What matters is that we have the data that we need to run through the models so that Brad and Al and Sat Paul can analyze the information and Tim puts together with the team a, a good report to the legislative body that represents your needs. And then on the side, if we through LTAP can figure out a little bit to how to help you analyze what you've got and maybe look at, at different products to stabilize and get better roadways, gravel roadways, uh, we all win. Because safer roads save lives, the ATSA mantra that we all believe in that's part of Vision Zero, uh, the better we do uh, the more of us to get home every day. The past needs study data and the gravel survey can all be found on our UGPTI website. All of our surveys that we collect now will be going onto a link on that survey or on that, on that website. Additionally, when we get information back from you, we are at some point going to close the loop with your entire team. So if a road superintendent or a township officer sends us information back, we're going to close the loop with the other commissioners, the auditor, uh, and the road superintendent in a county level. At the township level, we're going to make sure that Larry has all of the information and, and can help his, his uh, township officers uh, know where they're at and, and, uh, and such. Now, Al mentioned a little bit about how we look globally at this information. We will be, we will be evaluating your info. So, uh, know that we're looking out in your best interest. If we see that you're very low, Al's got some information in there in the survey that's going to flag that for us. We're going to reach out to you. If you're very high, we're going to reach out to you and the neighbors around you and, and again, get the best, the best output that we can to represent your needs. So with that, uh, Al is our lead for the gravel survey, the unpaved roadway segment. His phone number, his email, the survey mailbox, if you email them in, uh, you key punch and have them all electronically submitted. If you handwrite and mail them into us, that's fine. However you want to get them into us, uh, we're going to use that data and, uh, and help get a powerful legislative report for our next need study. So round robin uh, for the UGPTI team, there aren't any other questions in queue. Closing comments, we'll start with you, Al. Yeah, I, I just have really nothing other to add other than we appreciate the input and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Nice job. Tim? I concur with everything that's been said and uh, thanks in advance for, for the survey responses. And uh, again, we take this seriously. We really enjoy that we get the opportunity to do it. And uh, as a director, uh, Denver Toller would say, is why we were created in, uh, in, in, in uh, in state legislative law uh, and that we're there to be an independent researcher on this topic. And I want to thank Dale for the uh, strong relationship he has with the counties and the townships so that we, we can have this, uh, this type of interaction. Thanks. Thank you, Tim. And Brad. Oh yeah, I'd like to also thank everybody for their work, not only on the survey, but uh, for the data that's already been put into GRIT and the data that's probably going in yet this year. Uh, hopefully we can get that up to speed from whatever construction was done over the last four years. Uh, that would be great uh, to get that in. And then if you have any questions on any uh, anything related to GRIT or the, the, the surface selection tool, please feel free to email me or give me a call uh, directly because um, I think I'm probably the contact on that right now um, for that for those for those items. So perfect. Thank you, Brad. Well, 60,000 miles of gravel roadway across the state, 60 that's 60 percent of the needs, the financial needs on our 100,000 miles of local roadway network. So this is a critical survey. Uh, your time spent on this is time well invested. We greatly appreciate it. And reciprocating back from your time in will be our effort, and we will represent you well. Uh, we're very glad to do that, as the rest of the team has said. Greatly appreciate it. 
Have a wonderful day.